If there's one thing that I'm actually good at, it's making myself seem smarter than I actually am. So I think that studying the law is the prime way of doing that because the law is the basis of everything. Okay, I don't care if it's the economy, which, yeah, it's kind of going down these days, or it's not you not getting shot by a guy on the street. <coughs> Americans, right? Everything is based on law. Our civilization is based on law. Businesses are based on law. Because the law provides a predictable, predictable framework, big words, where we can do our best to be productive. It makes us feel safe. It guarantees stability in society. And honestly, in any debate about anything, any topic, you're going to need to kind of touch on law. And even if you don't need to, touching on law will make you seem big brain. Right. So with that intro done, let's get into what actually makes an effective rule of law. Now, please... By the way, I'm going to arm you for debates specifically, okay? If you are going to, and, and also, it's kind of an overview on what an effective rule of law is, but I want you to be prepared to mention this stuff when you're arguing with some blue-haired liberal or some redneck, all right, on, on Twitter or in person. So, when I'm talking effective here, I'm not saying ethical, okay? Effective does not equal ethical. We'll touch on ethics a little bit. But I'm going to mainly focus on what an effective rule of law is over the course of history. So just so you know, everything I talk about is going to be based on a book by Tom Bingham called The Rule of Law, uh, as well as my own experiences and what I've seen on YouTube. So first of all, I'm going to give you some principles for the law. Number one, accessible. Right, so... Let's say that it's illegal to eat cake in a country. But everybody naturally wants to eat cake. So if you didn't know that that was part of the law, then you would be committing crimes everywhere. So that means the rule of law is not effective because nobody, if nobody knows about the law, then everybody is going to commit crimes whether they know it or not. So the main thing about having a good rule of law is that it is accessible. Everybody knows it, right? You know that jaywalking is not allowed. You know that shooting somebody in the head so that they are killed is um, frowned upon in society, to say the least. So it has to be accessible. People have to understand the law. It cannot just be a bunch of hocus pocus, mumble jumbo jargon that nobody understands. Okay. Accessible. Second, it applies to everyone equally. In a way, this could be more important than the first one. Because in the past, right, it's just a little history lesson here, just to make yourself seem, make myself seem a little bit smarter as well. Um, the Magna Carta. So what is that? That's, it was um, a document drafted about a thousand years ago by Parliament in England, and as well as some, uh, I believe it was some random king, right, that basically said, no free man shall be something, okay, a bunch of legal jargon in this case, at the time it wasn't really accessible, this, right? No free man shall something, something, something. Keyword, no free man. Free man includes everybody, from the king to the peasant. Okay, now granted, it didn't apply to everybody, like a lot of women, or um, slaves, servants, those sort of people, but nonetheless, it kind of brought the status of king and peasant together. So a good rule of law has to apply to everybody equally. A crime committed by the king has to be adjudicated the same way as a crime committed by just Joe Schmo or some Discord moderator. Actually, Discord moderators might receive worse treatment. No offense. Uh, okay, controversial personal opinion. Anyways, so applies to everyone equally. And that actually leads me into the next point, which is habeas corpus. This is the only legal jargon I am going to use this entire entire time. Okay, but you can mention this word, and everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, what does it mean?" It means very simple, right to trial. So this is also something that developed out of England. Um, a lot of 
modern law principles we have today is actually developed out of the English system, just because they've, you know, everybody there is old, honestly, and the parliament kind of sucks these days, but it did last for a long time, so they thought about these questions quite a lot. Um, but yes, habeas corpus, right to trial. So in the past, what happened was some peasants complained about... I'm sorry for the notifications. Some peasants complained... About, I, I, I muted them, what? Okay, some peasants complained about how they were thrown in jail for, you know, random reasons. They were walking on a street, and then they tripped and fell, and then a little rock came out of the pavement. They were arrested for vandalism, went to jail for, like, two months. They're like, bro, what the hell? This is not right. They complained... And then they could issue a writ, which is basically, I want a damn trial to make sure that, you know, I get fair justice. Um, and they got it. And at this time, there wasn't really a fair judicial system, but the fact that you could ask for a trial, this principle of being able to ask for a trial really motivated um, the lawmakers and whatnot to actually issue good warrants um, for crimes. So habeas corpus, the right to trial, is crucial to the legal system. And I think the Constitution also talks about this as well, the U.S. Constitution. Right, and other than habeas, habeas corpus, there's also enforcement. What does enforcement mean? I sincerely apologize for this. Uh, notifications. It, Anyway, okay, good. You're done. All right. Enforce... Ah! I'm sorry. Enforcement is... Are you able to actually enforce this? This is something... This is a problem I see in America, right? Because from what I've heard um, in LA, right? Please, please correct me if I'm wrong on this. But in LA, the police won't come after a person unless they steal more than... I think it's 900 or $90 worth of goods. Or, or, not, or something like that. That is a problem. That means you don't have enough police to enforce the law. When you don't have enough police to enforce the law, there is no law. Because even if you're brought to a trial and the trial is fair, right, that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Even if the trial is fair, you won't, if you're not brought to the trial in the first place, it's bogus. It's all bogus. So there needs to be effective enforcement, which unfortunately seems very rare in America these days. Uh, right. And honestly, in a lot of other countries as well. In countries like Singapore, for example, their police force is extremely abundant. They have surveillance everywhere. Some people say this is authoritarian, and they are an authoritarian government. However, if you think about really enforcement of the rule of law, it's very effective in Singapore. The crime rates are quite low there. So... Enforcement is something that's extremely crucial. And other than that, also talk about trials. They must be fast and fair. This kind of ties into the point I said previously, which is on applies to everyone equally. But the judges need to be completely unbiased. So originally, judges were chosen by the king, which made them inherently biased. But then eventually what England did was they made sure that the judges were there indefinitely. And I think this is true for Supreme Court judges in America as well. They're chosen completely... Um, well, they're not... Yes, they're co they're chosen based on their merits, not necessarily on, like, votes and whatnot, on their actual skill. And they're able to stay there in indefinitely, meaning, you know, if, if a new president comes in, they can't just switch out Supreme Court justices. Granted, they can just still choose them, you know, like, if one dies, you can replace it, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? But, generally, this made sure that because the judges could stay there indefinitely, they would have more experience, and they would be less biased to the current ruler. So, trials have to be fast and fair. Oh, yes, and fast. If trials aren't fast, you can't get through people quickly. You can't get through people quickly. It means you don't have an effective justice system. And last point I'm going to touch on. Torture. And getting testimonials. This is an interesting point, actually. So, I know I'm talking about effective, right? So, I won't talk about how this is unethical, although it is unethical, I think. I think, in my opinion, humble opinion, it's, un it's unethical. But even talking about fairness, and generally, I think that 
torture is gonna first of all torture towards innocent people isn't conducive to a safe and good society what if the person's innocent then you're just it's pointless and you're wasting time so that's the first point second point if they did do it well no, no that's a, that goes in unethical well Inethical, in a way, it kind of ties into this, honestly. I know I said I want to talk about ethics, but then the point of being it being unethical kind of ties into it being like a bad legal system because a legal system that's good has to be accepted by people. So I actually will say this. If the person did do it, regardless, it's still unethical. And then the last point, if they were innocent, there's a chance that they'll still confess to a crime or provide false evidence just because anybody will do anything at all to get out of extreme pain so even if they didn't do it they could say they did just to get out of pain in a false way so that that yeah f's up the whole system obviously because then the things aren't even true you're not even it's not even about ethics you're just not providing truth anymore uh and i'd just like to talk about the goal of a rule of law actually the goal of the rule of law is to provide predictability. You have to be able to predict what's going to happen. So that means it leads to order. A rule of law must also be fair. Not necessarily people like it, but it has to be fair. All right. It's based on discretion not purely truth. Sometimes people mistake justice for truth. Justice means not killing somebody even if they kill multiple people, right? Obviously, capital punishment is an option, but then justice is providing an adequate crime according to a code of law, not according to principles of eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. It's based on our values. So there has to be very clear values, which lead to the very meaning of fairness. So predictability and fairness are the key aspects of a good rule of law. And yes, I think that concludes it. So I hope this video really helped you out a lot. Please, ah, my gosh, I hate when YouTubers do this, but subscribe, subscribe, hit the like button. Actually, please comment down below. That's the most valuable thing to me because I'm trying to learn from this as well. So if you have an opinion yourself, please comment down below. All right, goodbye.